dear brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel today it tells us of the betrayal of our Lord at the Last Supper, at the moment in which he is given his closest friends the miraculous gift of the Eucharist, then one of them turns against him and another professes to be willing to lay down his life for him, but then, as our Lord also foretells, will betray him that very night or deny him. And so it's a good passage for us to reflect on and take a few lessons. First of all, the need for humility and uh, a healthy distrust of our own uh, weakness. Peter was uh, full of zeal and yet unaware of his own weakness, which he painfully discovered later that night. And then, of course, after that, repented and became strong, especially when strengthened by the Lord uh, at Pentecost. But if Peter, the head of the church, the one that Jesus had said he would build his church upon his faith, if he can fail in the moment of trial, uh, then none of us should have much confidence about our own ability when put to the test. And so we also pray not to be put to the test. And then Judas, we can only speculate what was going on in his head and in his heart. He betrayed our Lord not in a moment of passion, but in a premeditated way, not perhaps fully understanding or perceiving the, the, the gravity of what the consequences would be for our Lord and for himself. But his end, his demise, comes quickly. He makes that one last act of ill will or bad faith, and then it's over for him. He lives perhaps 24 hours more, maybe a little bit more. But at that moment when he's given a last opportunity to repent. Uh, there are writers, mystical writers, who say that Jesus made overtures to Judas, and so did Our Lady, to turn away from his evil intention. But Judas had lost faith. He was attached to worldly things, wanted a worldly Messiah, and betrayed our Lord. We always are playing a very risky game when we willingly give in to sin. The sins of weakness our Lord is uh, very compassionate about. That's why he instituted uh, the sacrament of reconciliation, because we often fall, but to willingly sin, to knowingly do so, especially in a grave matter, of course, that's mortal sin. And no one knows if they're going to have an opportunity to confess. And if they're already planning to confess as they're planning to sin, then there's also the compounding of, of the sin by the sin of presumption. 
In any case, all this takes place in the context of the Last Supper when our Lord has given himself, his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And each of us then have a similar context in which to evaluate our own intentions and our own love for our Lord when we come to receive him body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. We should think of the Last Supper. We should think of Peter and Judas and ask ourselves if we have any reason to hesitate. Do we need to reflect more deeply on what we're about to do? To not receive our Lord in the Eucharist without sufficient reflection and without a clear conscience in a state of grace. Many, many people come to communion habitually, but don't go to confession all that regularly. And I say that simply just by observation. And this is perhaps then a good time to reflect on, on the practice of, uh, or actually not the practice, but the failure to, to make use of the sacrament of reconciliation. The just man sins seven times, is what the gospel tells us, or the, the sacred scripture tells us. And so, again, to have an overconfidence in our own uh, state of grace and our own worthiness is a, is a mistake. And we should avail ourselves frequently of confession to grow in awareness of our sinfulness, of our unworthiness, uh, to become virtuous in humility and in contrition so that then we can receive our Lord uh, without offending, without presumption, but confident that we've uh, that we are loving our Lord as best we can. And Our Lady, Refuge of Sinners and Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, will help us to receive her Son worthily if we foster this love in our hearts and this intention. So let us ask her, especially in this week when we commemorate our Lord's Supper and his self-sacrifice, let us ask for the grace to, to love him better and to uh, become more aware of the great gift that we have in the Blessed Sacrament. Praise be Jesus and Mary.